I, I don't like how your camera is so far away from us, Will. It's like I'm a voyeur in your house. Like I shouldn't be watching you. <laughs> <laughs> I see your toes. I feel like I'm 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 seeing way too much information. Hey, you know me? <laughs> this is my headquarters. That's why. Yeah, I see all my stuff. This seems like this does seem like we're watching you work and we're not doing a show right now. <laughs> like yeah, like we like hey, yo, yo, check, <laughs> like, I'm te- look at the security camera. I promise you he's working. Look at him. I promise you he's yeah. working. Look at him. And then I start becoming self-aware. Just true, but show city. <laughs> Man, you come straight out of a comic. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Straight Out of a Comic Book. I'm your host, Will Farrow, and of course, today we got Captain Keloy Esquire, DR Lack in the building, and CT, who is always dope. I wish you could put the always and stuff like that now, but that's too much. That's too much to type. It's honestly. too wordy. People, you know, people yeah. aren't all there. Yeah. But as I said, CT is always dope. Hey, yo, y'all know we back with some more of your favorite talk about comic books, movies, pop culture, entertainment, the whole nine. And today's episode is no different. And so I want to jump immediately into it and start off with the hot topic, which is now Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mutant Mayhem. The new trailer has dropped. Uh, Seth Rogen has shown us that he does do acid, and that's why he decided to put it on this movie. And I'm not going to lie to him. It's going on me after seeing the truck. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's going I, on. Me. I think this is a rumor, but I think it's the same the same uh illustrators of the Spider-Verse, right? Well, Sony Animation? The the same the same art style. <laughs> Sony animation? <laughs> the comic book art style, man. The drawing, <laughs> man. So listen, that answer shut down every possibility of a rover you heard. Sony Animation is behind this Paramount property. <laughs> I'm certain if I look up Sony Sony Animation projects, they don't they don't only do that style. Look it up. Yeah, hey, you, <laughs> you really <laughs> back yourself into a corner, you boy. Can put the, the fire to the toes. Huh? Speaking of which, yeah. uh, hey Will Ferrell, let me ask you something, man. Um, this Sunday, what'd you do? This past Sunday. Okay. You know what you didn't do, Will Ferrell, is get invited to Dion Lack's birthday party that he had on Sunday. And, you know, speaking of him having a birthday party on Sunday, it's crazy. I marked his birthday on my calendar, Will Ferrell, and I was like, man, let me make sure I reach out to Dion Lack and just say happy birthday, you know? Call him. He's as loud as hell in the background. I say, hey, what's up, man? He's like, hey, what up? I say, hey, man, uh, you know, just... Wanted to call and wish you happy birthday. I didn't want to text it. He's like, oh, man, thank you so much, man. I was like, yeah, what, what, so, so what you doing? And he was like, oh, man, just had a few people over, man. We just, you know, celebrating all of that. And I'm like, oh, that's what's up. So I just wanted to know if you were there as well, Will Ferrell, because if you were there, I would have to fight this nigga. But since you were not there, I, I just got to. I was not there, and I did the complete actual opposite because you mm-hmm. were like, I called him because I didn't want to text him. Mm. I knew of the birthday and I didn't want to call. So he Mm. asked, were you coming? I'm like, I'm going to send the text because I was like, I'm not getting out this bed. How about that? But I also told, I did not get an invitation. I saw it on on Instagram. Mm. And so I also have been told, though, because, you know, we're in this new century now. That counts as getting sent an invitation. No, And I'm still 50-50 about that. Not at all. Because the algorithm, let me show you how, I'm glad you said that, Will Ferrell. So glad you said that. I didn't see that post until uh, Sunday night at 1130 when I refreshed my timeline. So that's how the algorithm works. So you never should post an invite online. You should always reach out to the people that are close to you. You put that up for, for fans or for people that might not have your phone number. <laughs> but, you know, people that you, you know, you've been in their home and you've shot content and spent you know especially you spent the last birthday with the nigga that's that's when you want to make sure you uh get reached out to but hey man it's his birthday you know he get a chance to invite who he wants to have around you understand will bro hey yeah, will. I, I, yeah ninja that's turtles that's man your will let me ask you something what's that uh ant-man quantum manium 
Um, the movie came out a couple weeks ago. Uh, where were you when that movie was coming out? And did you get an invite? Like we got invited to uh, the last 15 Marvel DC uh, movies that um, <laughs> that we got invited from, from CT. Uh, because I thought maybe he's not going this time. So mm. now I see the pictures online and I see a plethora of niggas that mm. I'll be, oh, this nigga got invited. Oh, wow, he was, he was the 17th man Mm. Uh, when we were playing soccer. Wow. Mm. I, I don't even know this nigga's name. Wow. Mm. <laughs> he got it. Oh, they went to the 4DK. Okay. Yeah. Wow. They got all the K's in this one. Yeah, we they got, got all the K's. Glasses, huh? They got the I'm... shit sprayed on them. Okay. They was in a quantum manium. I oh, turned mine wow. off. But yeah, but, you can get a spray on them. I turned mine off. <laughs> I, give you, I give you one more, Will. <laughs> I'm answering that. <laughs> So Will did not get an invite. I'm gonna for those of you guys who are watching, let me clear this up because you're probably sitting there like, man, not only is Dion a deflector, but this guy CT is a villain. I'm not. Allow me to explain. For the past two and a half years yes. of films, comic book movies that have come out, I have taken it upon myself to buy yeah. about 10 to 20 tickets uh, mm -hmm. and invite my close friends and people that I know are into comic book films to go see them with me, right? About four or five months ago, I decided, you know what? I'm not buying niggas tickets no more. As a matter of fact, I'm going to see if there's a movie that comes up and people invite me to, if they say, hey, that movie's coming out, are we going to see it? And three, this past Quantum Mania, I didn't pay for nobody's ticket. I was just like, hey, uh, we're going to be at this theater, get your tickets if you want to come. And those are the people that showed up. Ironically, completely different group than the people's tickets that I have been providing. And that is the world we live in, folks. So and back to Dion's birthday party. And let me piggyback off my birthday. Go ahead. Um, Friday night, Twilla asked me, what do you want to do for your birthday? Mm -hmm. Who's my best friend? I said, you know what, dude? We need to catch up on some uh, um, P-Valley. Let's mm. just watch the Season two, and she's like, No, dude, dude, let's celebrate yourself. We're you supposed to be doing a Sunday. I said, I'm only doing is shooting a, a, a podcast with Chaz. That's what we already had scheduled. We're gonna do it on my birthday. It's like, Well, let's let's make that whole thing a day. Let's make that whole thing a day and have people coming in. Mm. And I'm like, Gosh, I was like, The, the thought of it is like, it's is exhausting. Mm. I gotta, you know, get a bigger camera. I gotta do all this stuff. I gotta, you know, I can't shoot a bunch of content on my laptop. Mm -hmm. um, because if people come in, people have their head like, hey, what's going on? It's me. So I was like, I'd rather have a whole camera set up. She's like, well, just whoever comes, whoever comes. And I'll just have like refreshments. <clears throat> uh, my girls came, Chaz came, Nene came. That's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know who could have came? Me. Yeah. yeah I, I, honestly, it was, it, was, it was one of those embarrassing things. It was like, I don't really have anything big playing. I was like, I really just wanted to have like a, a movie, like a, a Marvel movie day, just to watch movies all day. And you know, people, the people that came came, and I, and I was, it was, it was one of those. What if nobody comes and we got all this food? And it happened. We got a bunch of food, and <laughs> about ten people came. And you're right. Uh, sending out the invites would have been. I felt like it was a last minute thing. It would have been a last minute thing because it was like a Friday night, Saturday morning thing. You sure? For sure. I could have definitely invited the same people, but I didn't. I'm going to make so, it even worse, and then we're going to move on. This is I'm going to give you this. Because <laughs> <laughs> I really want this to sink into a skin. I had your birthday on my calendar so much so, Dion, that, that, that I removed it. That I said, no. 2024? <laughs> I ain't seen it on that. Sorry. Now, Nick, you are dead. I had his birthday on my calendar so much so that I made sure to not make plans on Sunday because I said, it's Dion's birthday. Surely he's going to tell me what he wants to do. So I'll just wait for that. So when I called and I heard that, I said, I could have been out of town. The audacity. Yo, I didn't even tell Chaz and he was there. Well, because you do a podcast together. I'm discounting Chaz. He wouldn't I, have came I, if I, you I'm just posted you. It's like, but you know what it sounds like? It sounds like both of y'all kind of pivot to y'all original stuff. Because like even for UCT, you, you know, you changed up your dynamic and stuff. Which, by the way, on the side, right. I'm glad you did now. 
because now I know to like invite you. Normally, I wouldn't invite you to go watch stuff because I know you throw the parties. And so it's mm. like, and I know I go random times, but now that I know that you don't do it like that no more, I'll just start inviting you when I go. I mean, you know what I'm saying? As long as if it's, you know, I'm down. I'm always down, yeah. especially if the time lines up. Yeah, but see, y'all, y'all changed y'all stuff up a little bit. And so, you know, like Dion didn't plan shit. It was just like, yo, I'm going to work. And it's like, nah, your best friend going to throw something. So it's just like. Just okay. to piggyback off of last year, 40th. Didn't I say I didn't want to do a 40th birthday party? <laughs> and Twilla was exactly. like, same thing today. She was like, yo, you need to do something. Let people and celebrate you. 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 He she said, cool. Fire. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> but you, yeah, but, but you, you definitely should have said, said something. Something. If this is MySpace, I am sure CT is in your top 20 on your MySpace page. If this was yeah. 2006. I'm yeah. definitely in this top seven. And if I'm not, I'm yeah. beating the shit out of whoever he is to See, make me number six or seven. That that deserves that deserves an invitation. I will say that it's got to be. Let me tell you, Dion's important people in his life, bro. It is both his daughters, Twilla. That's three. All right. Mm-hmm. Outside of them, an argument can be made for him being closer with Chaz than he is me. But after that, you got a uh, oh Kareem. That's five. And then number six would be, mm. oh, number six would probably be uh, maybe Tone Bell, maybe, but he's not closer with him than I am. So these are, you know, these are the people. Anyway, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. How about it, fellas? Huh? Yes. Huh? Before, we jump in, before we jump into that, maybe, maybe there's a solution. Maybe. <laughs> Will ain't <are>. shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all, y'all the one brought this amongst the chaos, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's oh, yeah. like, it needs to be said. Maybe we go see something together and celebrate Dion's birthday. As well. hey. The Jason Statham movie. I ain't seen that yet. There we go. Statham. Jason up? Statham got a new movie. His movies always hit. Yeah, I don't need to be knowing what they are. Now I still go see it. And I, because you know it's gonna be good. Yeah. Somebody getting their ass whooped, and it's gonna whooped. be some, something, something dope. Whew. You know, it's funny. He hasn't changed his accent. He hasn't changed any of his styles of movies. He hasn't done a romantic comedy. He hasn't done... <laughs> no, he did a romantic comedy. Don't do that. Which one? Crank. Hilarious. <laughs> that That's a, a good romantic. point. That's a romantic comedy. Don't do that. That's a romantic that comedy. Yeah. That nigga was surviving. Yeah, By love. any means necessary, too. Love. He, he smashed her in a, in, a, uh, in a baseball field, bro, and they in front of everybody. <laughs> Just to keep his heart rate up. It was brilliant. <laughs> Yo, so the greatest love companies up. The greatest that is a great though. point. That's they did two of those, didn't they? They did three of those, I think. No, three not. cranks? I, I, know, they, I know they did two. I may, be, I may be wrong. I, I swear, though. For sure. I didn't see a third one. That's a great no, no. cast. Yeah, yeah, no. Crank two, high voltage. You yeah, crank. He did two of them cranks, boy. I saw both of them. They brought this nigga back alive. <laughs> and now you missing this. Like, wait a minute. Did somebody just make a movie about Operation and just put action in it? <laughs> Bro, you could make any movie with Jason Statham and it'd be better. Like, if you make a movie that's trash and you throw him in it, it's going to sound amazing. Yeah. You're like, all right, bet. So we want to do a sequel to Titanic. Okay, you be like, oh my god. Okay, so pick. Yeah. This is when the ship goes down, right? All the pieces are going. This is when Jack starts to go into the water. Out of nowhere, Jason Statham comes back up with Jack, right? And then you're like, tell me more. Look, that, that's de- that's definitely when the movie dude with the glasses be like, this just CT, you son of a bitch, you've done it again. <laughs> Let's get it rolling, y'all. Let's get it. get it going. Give him thirty million. I want to see this go right now. <laughs> oh, he's saved the day again. <laughs> he's the best, bro. And then what? The Meg? He has been forty-two for nineteen years. <laughs> he has that same look, man. <laughs> I was like, how do you have a receipt like receding hair that still don't leave? Don't man. leave. Like that ball just won't bald. Won't bald. And they they even do the honor by giving him more hair for a movie. Like give him like a like a buzz cut or box cut, guile cut. Has he? 
No, I haven't. I can't picture him in no movies with no, that, that. No, ridiculous. I think I think if they did, it was like flashbacks or something like that. Like kind of like you know, like how to do the little Family Guy spoofs and stuff. I think mm-hmm. it may have been something like that in the movie. But you're right; it ain't never been no full thing where he just had you mm-hmm. know all this these all the way to the chest and shit. Just it was one movie he had a wig, and I was like, that's a hilarious wig. I think it was a damn. It was a movie where he was playing, of course. A bodyguard of somebody, and he had a wig on, but it was a flashback. And then, you know, President Day, he had the baldy. It was like kind of like it was kind of like brownish a little bit, right? Almost with a hint. Yes, I think we think about the same movie. Yeah, something to do with his like. It's some. It, it was a really good movie too. Yeah, I see all his movies. Yeah, and it was something with a flashback. So that's the only I, thing I, I can recall. I typed in Jason Statham with it's a hair. Gotcha. <laughs> Got you. Got <laughs> you. <laughs> Don't worry, we've all been wondering. We've all been wondering. <laughs> they got a couple of them. Uh, That's the one I see. Perfect. Yeah, the one right there to the top uh, left. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see what that is. That's funny. Yeah, he got like a long hair down to his, his, uh, his shoulders. He's the best. <laughs> he's the best. He's the best, bro. Like, think of he's, what- he's, unfici- he's like the unofficial, like, they don't do action stars no more, but nope. it's like, if there's an action star like Schwarzenegger in them, it's Statham. It's Statham, bro. There's nobody on his level right now. Uh, The Rock? No. No. Because The Rock makes, The Rock is, a, I don't count The Rock as an action star. I count The Rock as someone who's built like an action star that just does movies. The, the funny thing is, is how they always try to justify why this nigga so big on The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what? How'd you get here? I uh, did uh, ten years in Nam uh, before I got uh, injured. Yeah. Now, I'm, now I'm like, like, like Central guy. Intelligence did not need that whole backstory. But like, y'all used to be fat, and I started, you know, just looked away. No one cares, bro. Like, we know who you are. We know who you are. But they be trying to make it sense, make it make sense for people who don't know The Rock. And it's like, nah, you could just be a yoked ass actor. That's what I want to see, bro. Bring that back. Bring back real size people in movies, bro. One of the movie, you know what show Mike and Molly. I remember they were getting a lot of press uh, before it aired, and they said that these two were regular people, even though Billy Gardell has been a comedian for 20 years before that. And, you know, she, Melissa McCarthy, had already been in the business for so long. But they were like, yeah, you know, uh, there's a new show, Mike and Molly, coming out with these two stars that are, you know, just like regular people. And, you know, they're just, they're not actors, but they're going to be in a sitcom. And I was like, that first of all, that doesn't make sense. You're not gonna hire normal people to act who've never acted because people wouldn't watch that show. So these people are actors, but you're saying regular looking people because they're not the Hollywood standard of what you think they should look like. And I love seeing regular body people because that's what represents America. Yeah. We need we need more Adam Sandlers. To oh to facts. Them. So much money to start making movies. That's it. Because it we we gave it to Seth, but then Seth kind of went too far. It's like, all right, Seth went too far. Yeah, like Seth went too far. Yeah, 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 yeah. We ain't gonna get to it, but like you took the wrong exit. Yeah, you went a little too far. But speaking of normal, I think it's super bad. The whole crew would look normal. They they definitely they definitely that's that's not that that's that's not not what we we, that's yeah, that's not what we say he took that turn. Yeah, he took not that movie. Yeah, Yeah, not that one. No. I could save the movie. I ain't going to say, but no, 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 even no, no, CT no. will say, yes, no, 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 that's no, no, what that no, no. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so like, but speaking of Seth, that yeah. he is he is one of the covers of our hot topic, which is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So there's a new one coming out. And so one the first thing I want to know is from two people who have been fans of this franchise for so long, Man. how do y'all feel about the consistent rebooting of this franchise? Dion, you can go first. I think it's I think it's it's needed because I've been a fan since since eighty five. Um, ironically, this is I don't know why I never thought about it. this. Is the first time hearing teenagers like yeah. I went back to the originals. Like these are grown ass. These are middle aged adults. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like all these are men. This is the first voice sounding teenagers. 
and now and, and and now like they should be children they should be doing childish stuff like a lot of the, the oh, I, I started to like kind of like think like okay the one from the cartoons they were like i would say they were late teenagers maybe 20s like vibing looking at like mm-hmm. the, the things they were doing they weren't doing like stupid stuff then like the cartoon i mean then the the the, the movie i was like i would say still say 20s they were still making wise decisions and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, the, the reboot came out. And I was like, these were all old. They were not Yo, teenagers. No, it was grown ass turtles. <laughs> like the Yo. one that just came out in like 2018? Yeah. Grown at Raphael was a 47. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's saying, what that teenager about them? Oh. <laughs> they got teenagers. They <laughs> teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We got teenagers and we are mutant <laughs> <laughs> turtles. That I feel like I agree with that 100%. So yes and um this is animated. So the possibilities are endless compared to live action where I don't think anybody would be happy. Although I think I'm one of the few fans of the second Ninja Turtles movie that came out recently. Um, um I don't think it was Michael Bay. <clears throat> that second one was somebody else, right? Oh, yeah, with Crane. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I like that one, but a lot of people are still like, no. And that's because everybody really wants to see an animated one because you can go further. It's kind of like a Dragon Ball Z movie. It's, it can only be animated because of what you have to do to make it believable. You cannot have a human being be Goku or Vegeta. It's no. impossible. So, animated is the way to go. But as a Turtles fan, I like that live action I aspect. Too, man, I do too. Yeah, I, I fucks with both of the uh, the first one with the Michael the Michael Bay one with with uh, Megan. What's the last name? Wow. Megan something. Megan yeah, Fox. Megan Fox. I liked them, but I feel like they never used their weapons. Uh, they just kind of like swung, but never actually struck. I mean, if this is gonna be like a live action, gritty Michael Bay, I kind of wish they can at least fuck some like robot drones. But they never use their weapons, and I, I love the dynamics of Donatello being the tallest but the skinniest, Leonardo being like you know you know the leader, but Raphael was a stocky. They all had different personalities, and I <laughs> like that. People didn't like how real they face looked, and it was like man, no, this no, no, let's no, no, let's say let's say it for what it was. They gave them niggas noses. And we didn't like that. Shit. <laughs> we didn't like that. Like turtles have noses, man. No, no, not I, not these turtles. These turtles are flat, smooth nose faced turtles, and that's what we wanted. Somebody even put up CGI of it where they took the nose out. They went with the original, and I was like, "Yo, if y'all have gave us this one, it have gave us that old school feel." But I understand why y'all chose it, so you can uh, differentiate the different type of species of turtles the Ninja Turtles were, because they all all weren't the same turtles. Nigga, I didn't know that. Don't forget, you just put me up on knowledge. I appreciate that, Will. But don't forget that these are mutant <laughs> turtles. So no matter what nose they had, they had to be mutated. Yeah. Muties. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. Can't yeah. Speak. Yeah. Because Michael Bay did what he was supposed to do. Like, we're giving you millions of dollars. We need you to make this look flashy. It's turtles. It's like, cool. And we touched on all the points we're supposed to touch on, too. It felt like when X-Men first came out, when Spider-Man mm. first came out, it's like you did what the company needed you to do. But for us mm. as fans, there was something still kind of missing. Yeah. The fan aspect, and when we get into these films, man, the fan as- aspect has only gotten more polished because we've gotten more vocal over the past 20 years. And I say 20, actually it's 23 years because X-Men came out in 2000 or 99? I think 2000. I think, yeah, I think 2000. It was the first, like, what? And when it came out, everybody was just excited to see it on screen. So we weren't really nitpicky. And if we were, there was no way to communicate that because the Mm -hmm. social media wasn't around. So as the years came along and then you get Daredevil and the Daredevil uh, director recently came up and apologized because he said, I was trying to shoehorn so much into that movie. I was trying to give you an origin story for Daredevil, origin story of Elektra. And I was like, that's why I felt like Elektra had two movies because it was, you know what I mean? Like that movie was so, uh, it was just too much. But anyway, so 
fans are the ones who have dictated that, yo, this has to be accurate. This doesn't look like this. So people, if Michael Bay would have dropped those movies early 2000s, he would be held just like Sam Raimi is for the first two yeah. Spider-Man because that's what we wanted at that time. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, we want things that are much more accurate. We want to see, just like you guys watched The Last of Us, you want to see The Last of Us version of every superhero movie. You want it to be from page to yeah. uh, screen. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Yep. You, can you can differentiate a little bit, too. Tell me that Splinter and Shredder fight wasn't fire in that <laughs> reboot. But that, but that, that was the thing. Like how you said, it wasn't enough fighting, and that's the thing yeah. I think that kind of took it away. Was like, yo, Shredder ain't no joke. Like when you, <laughs> like when you read the comics, like Shredder ain't nothing to play with. Like it takes mutant turtles to defeat this person, yeah. Yeah. and so it was like this was the one where you saw it was like, yo, Shredder ain't no yeah. joke. And I it wish was the quick like, plan was robots. Cause then they can show them like actually killing and beating. They never used their weapon. They was using their weapons to pry open doors and and like to, to, to do flips. And stuff. I was like, man, yeah, you, you, all that sword play, Leonardo was, I was like, <laughs> you didn't slice, slice nobody. This whole film. <laughs> That's what I wanted to see. That's what you see in the cartoon. Wood. In the cartoon, you saw them use their weapons and go against. Uh, certain robots or drones, but when they fought the clan, they weren't doing it, you know what I'm saying, with the weapons like that. You would see Donatello more, you would yeah. see uh, Michelangelo, <laughs> but you would never see Leo slicing nobody or Raphael <laughs> with that, you know what I mean? Not at all. It's like, okay, y'all take care of the humans, we're gonna take care of these robots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, I like, do yeah, remember that, yeah, but it makes sense because it was for like cartoons and so even back then, like in the 90s. They did that so you don't show blood to kids. So that's why most right. a lot of stuff was robots. Yeah. Like, people, like, like CT used to tell us. So I get that. But it was just yeah. like, this would have been the time where this could have really focused on a lot of their fighting style and showing them training and stuff mm -hmm. to be able to give us more of an impact. Like Michael Bay went what he went for. It was like the flashy, high impact. And it was just like, okay, cool. But there could have been a lot of grit to this, a lot of espionage type stuff, but them sneaking into like these Foot Clan spots. Cause like it was like they didn't, we didn't even really see them investigate when Splinter got taken. I mean, uh, yeah, when Splinter got taken, it was and like, yeah, wait, in the first one. You talking about 91 or you talking about no, 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 the most recent one. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, cause they, like, they didn't really investigate after he got messed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. the rule. You're allowed to, when it comes to blood, if it's alien blood, then that's a different color than red. You can do any color other than red, and you can show some of the most violent scenes possible. <laughs> I swear, yeah. look at Avengers One; like they, it was violent. If you replace that blue blood for red, yeah. just go back and watch Avengers One, yeah, yeah, and yeah. in your mind, change the blood to red, and realize that that movie should have been rated R. <laughs> but if you change the color of blood, it's PG, baby. <laughs> Yeah, that's what they did on uh, Suicide Squad, the first one. Yeah, you know, blew up into dust. I was like, "Yep." Oh, they had like the little black little things of blood and yeah. stuff. I was like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was red though. Oh, this would be a whole different story. Oh, if it was red, I don't know why. Censors are ridiculous to me, bro. Like working yeah. in TV for so long and talking to standards of practices. So many of them are idiots. Some of them are really good, but some of them are it, like they can't answer a question. Like, hey. Why can I cut an alien's head off and his blood is green and that's okay, but I can't cut a human alien head? I mean, I can't cut a, a human being's head off and it show red. Why is that not okay? It's, it's the exact same concept. Because like if it's like you know how if if you see me vomit, mm -hmm. that will make people like you know they they get they get triggered from that. So if I cut off a teddy bear's hair, you see like cotton comes out. You're like that's adorable. But if you actually see. <laughs> you like, ridiculous oh. you're absolutely yeah. right but yeah. that's crazy <laughs> but you gotta remember too like the main market that they are pitching to that middle american stuff they're still very traditional still very religious based too and so they mm. apply all of that stuff to those rules and shit like, like for us like we don't mind like we was watching the replacement killer when we were seven so it's just like yeah, yeah we, yeah. Bow, we bow it but like for little timmy that's our same age he having nightmares and stuff like that about this because he didn't see somebody get their head sliced off. You want to hear a nightmare? Have y'all played Hogwarts Legacy yet? Yes. yes. Did you finish it? I did not. No, 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 no. I just finished it yesterday. Um, and by finish it, let me tell you something. Dion first. Do you play video games, Dion? Okay. Oculus. 
Ah, you over there watching porn. So, Will, when you get to <laughs> Hogwarts Legacy towards the ending, I'll tell you, take your time, because if you do your side quest and your main quest, by the time you finish the game, you'll be like me and have completed everything. And you're like, huh, I should have faced myself out more, right? But the game is crazy when there's this one part where you get offered to buy a shop. They offer you to buy a shop. And when you buy the shop, there's a mission that has you go downstairs into this. The game changes for this mission. Um, think scare. It's a cross between Scarecrow and Mysterio. That mission. It'll blow your mind. Don't play that mission at night. Because I play that mission at night. And I said, okay. what? The fuck! I couldn't go to sleep until I finished it because I knew I would be fucked up in my dreams. I gotta be honest with you. I I, I want to touch on the things that you said that we touched on today, but I thought we were talking about Creed three because I have some thoughts. It is. I have not seen Creed three. You um, are out of pocket, bro. I am out of pocket because this is what. And you know what? And you know what? Now I know I'm gonna catch slack for this, but I gotta say it. what. This is why you don't go to the movies with women. That ain't your girlfriend. <laughs> what happened? Because they, because they don't care. Uh-huh. And so they'll put this stuff off. Like, I was supposed to go to the movies uh, opening weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, she wasn't able to do it. And then I'll give it, I'll give it to the next day because she got sick. So I'll give her that. And so now, you know you know how like all of us get, we get busy throughout the week. Like, hey, when do you want to go see it? Oh, let's try for it. As soon as the chicks say try for it, we ain't doing it. It's not happening. Mm, it's a wrap. And be like, um, let's see if I. Then the second one is, I can either do in the morning time or I can do afternoon. You ain't doing neither one of them times because you ain't decided yet. So we ain't. We know we ain't getting to that day. Mm-hmm. Now it's Wednesday, mm-hmm. and I still ain't seen Jonathan Majors and Killmonger fight each other. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm not gonna give you any spoilers. Obviously, I'm not that type of guy. But I will say, Jonathan Majors is a star. I will also say Michael B. Jordan has now crossed yeah. over into seeing the business side of Hollywood, right? He's gotten out of, he's never had an ego, but a lot of times as actors, as comedians, as writers, producers, we get into the ego mode of I'm occupying a certain space in this business, right? A la. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Will Smith, Sylvester Stallone, when you become these massive people in Hollywood, you don't really want somebody else who could occupy that space in your space while you're occupying it. However, when you take that ego out of it and you realize how much money you can make, the money... And that's what Michael B. Jordan in this movie. You will see Michael B. Jordan has become a full on businessman because right right now, what everybody's talking about in the world, black, white, Cuban, Asian, all of this is Jonathan Majors and Jonathan Majors is in this movie. And Michael B. Jordan reaps all the benefits of everybody in this movie. Yeah. And I've, I've heard that he's like not even just to that point, but then also to like, you know, like kind of like how we get in credits at Marvel. Like, bro, you've opened something that most haven't. Like, you've given yourself a lane like a Jordan Peel. Like, if you play it right, you found a successful way to low key make live action anime without disrespecting anime. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a whole lane he can go down that gives us some variety if he chose to want to do that. But I heard that's what one of these things in this movie, like you really take away. I've seen a lot of people online talking about just like the anime aspect, all the references he's used, how much he's dedicated that. Because there's like one anime that's like a boxing anime that he definitely took a lot of that stuff from. Uh, but they said, you know, like, no, I've not seen anyone go like, yo, oh, he messed it up. He done that. They're just like, no, nah, bro, you you did that. And you show Jonathan Majors and you let him shine on this. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to say this because you haven't seen it. I'm going to say Michael B. Jordan. And this is for one of the clips because, Will, you do an amazing job with these clips. Michael B. Jordan, I know 
you've probably thought of this, but this is something that you have to do. Take off the glasses. Exactly. Spin that character off in Creed. Spin Dame's character off. Do another film where now you show his inception going into prison and you show how he rose up the ranks. Maybe the guards had a, a little jail fighting ring and that's how he was able to stay out of trouble and keep his head down for those years. If you don't want to do a full on movie like that, have him getting ready for his next fight in present day, do a Godfather two, show him having flashbacks of when he went to prison and having those fights and bam, go from there. That's all hey, I'm going to say. They already got their franchise and it'd be set up perfect for him to do. Yeah. Reboot, reboot Undisputed. You know, what? what, what, what and Reboot have to follow him because you can bring everybody. You can bring Wesley, you can bring Michael John White, you can bring Boyka, you can bring Vin, you can bring all of them people into that world and mm -hmm. reboot Undisputed and tell it from his side. That's a wow. great point. That's wow. a great But then that's also universe crossing because I still want the character of Dame from Creed within that. Mm -hmm. But I definitely feel like Jonathan Majors is just getting started. He he's going to be, he's, he's going to get all the I'm, franchises. Two things. I'm actually curious to know what his 2001, I'm 2021, 22, and 23 was like. When did he film, film Devotion, Loki 1, uh, Ant Man, Creed 2? Was there ever any crossovers? Because when you have this much back to back, and I know he's still shooting stuff from other films right now. But he's also doing he's doing press conferences for all the other movies that just came out. And in each one of these movies that just came out, he has different accents, different characters. And when he played this Los Angeles character in Creed 3, I was like, I believe this dude. I believed him. I believed him. I believe and like in, like institutionalized too. Like he was just kind of like, like, oh, you hey, you know, uh, you know how we do it, you know what I'm saying? I was like. This is a, this sound like a nigga that was in jail for fifteen. That's years. also a horrible impression, but it was it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was good for Dion. But it was man, that movie without giving anything to Will. Oh, Creed three is the best of the Creeds. Creed one and two. Let me tell you something. Creed two was good because that Drago dude was massive. And you're like, yeah. Jesus, in real yeah. life, this guy's here. They shouldn't have fought each other. They shouldn't. They shouldn't class. Should, that should, come on. That's, that's what I just did not understand because I was like, <laughs> wait, is this a professional boxing association in this movie? Because y'all walking out with the WBC championships like, <laughs> they didn't allow this fight to happen. Like, this, like what is 5, this? 6'5", 220, 250. Michael B. Jordan is 175, 5'11". I was like, this soaking wet. And when you look at, so Creed 1 was more of a Rocky movie because it's like, mm -hmm. oh, Rocky's back in the game. They were all focused on Rocky. Respect yeah. to Sylvester Stallone. He created it. Then you look at Creed 2. Creed 2 was like, like neither of these movies had really set him up to be this, this champion that had been killing everything and winning and all of that. And Creed three, go see Creed three. Will I just okay. man? Okay, yeah. Because 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 I got the first two. Real quick, real quick, real quick. How, how would you how would you feel if the Drago fight would have been like every, all the all the action that happened happened, but the actual Drago fight was the third movie, and Damien was the second movie. It would have made way more sense, and I'm right. gonna tell you why. Like you killed my father. You now I kill my to. well, he didn't, but the, you know, his yeah, dad yeah, did. Yeah, so, so this is what it should have been. been because the second movie, I was like, This, I see you, why you like, I gotta, I got to fight. Yeah, the <laughs> second movie, bro. If this, if the third movie would have been the second, whew, yeah, because the third movie just made sense for yeah. the character of Creed. That's why it's the best in the franchise. The yeah. first two, there are so many plot holes in because one. I get it. This is Apollo's illegitimate son through some through another woman. But where is that woman? Also, you recast. <laughs> oh, she died. No, I know, but I'm oh. saying you re you didn't show me any flat. Like so, when I see Gosh. Felicia Rashad, she was recast from the original woman who played Apollo's wife. Uh, rest in peace. She passed away as well. But you're it's too many holes. It's like all right, so. What reason? Okay, so she just wants to have a piece of Apollo, and this is the biggest plot hole. Apollo had two other kids. 
They yeah. didn't even show them in these Creed movies. In none of them. That's one spoiler I get you. They still ain't showed these kids. If you Google, had, okay, you, you, asked, you answered a question for me about that one too, so never mind. If you Google Apollo Creed's children, I swear to God, it will say Adonis Creed unnamed son unnamed daughter that's what it says that's how little they cared about those characters yeah, yeah. so if you just switch two and three would have made perfect sense um however um apollo fighting drago i would love to have seen that now so, because they built it it was too fast with this, with this Creed, so would you say Creed's three would have been way better to fight Drago? Yes, because now you've built up his legacy. Whereas Gosh. what you what you'll see in part three is something where it's almost um, it's yeah, almost it like still worked. I kind of feel like the stories could have still worked, but the actual fights, yeah, I think they should have swapped well, the fights. Well, not Dion, to your point now, like even just not even like how you like CT not giving too much weight. It does make sense because now at this time it's like, hey, you've built everything up. Because even in two, we saw him become world champ. It's not like he took over already and it was everything there. It's like, no, like, especially the way Drago was uh pushing his son to be. It's like, yo, we want to take everything away from him. It's like, yo, if that would have been saved till three, and then to see him lose and to like get injured like he was. That yeah. storyline would have been dope for the third one, and then but the, the problem was, two was technically Rocky's redemption, and so it's like, yo, you have to deal with the ghosts of my past, yeah, yeah. and you're not sure if he wants to do another one, and so that's that's the kind of like the Montreal <laughs> school job and shit. You're not sure what Sylvester Stallone wants to do next, so it's like, hey, we got to kind of get this story out, mm -hmm. and now that we know, like, hey, you didn't want to do the third one, it's like, man, you see, like if you just yeah, play ball. We could have had this really lined up to be a dope franchise, even yeah. though it is not to take away from it. It is here's, a dope franchise. here's here's one of the plot holes that I love. It had nothing to do with the movies. Apollo Creed died in 1985. Yeah, <laughs> yes. So even if he bust a nut that morning, yes, <laughs> yes, Adamus should have been come on, man. 30 39 right now, bro. <laughs> Listen, man. Flat out, bro. Let's just let's just call a spade a spade. <laughs> I get it. You want Michael B. Jordan, he's on fire in what is this 20 uh 12, 2013? The first one came yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I love Michael B. Jordan, bro. Michael B. Jordan at the time of him getting creed was the only only guy that I can see doing it. However, this is the biggest plot hole, and I had this conversation on my stream uh yesterday. It was a hole in the writing for them to have killed Apollo Creed, bro. He should have <laughs> never died because Apollo Creed died in Rocky 3? 4. 4. He died in Rocky 4. No. Yeah, he did. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. He died in yeah. Rocky 4. When he died in Rocky 4, it didn't need to happen. He could have just been paralyzed. He could have been in a coma for the whole movie. You still get the exact same outcome for Sylvester Stallone being like, you hurt my friend. You ruined him. I don't even, we don't even know if he's going to live or die. I got to beat you. Right. Mm -hmm. Also, Apollo Creed was Sylvester Stallone's, uh, Rocky's only friend. He was the one that they had become rivals, and he always kept him in the game. He kept his head on straight. He's the one that kept, like, this is the one I could talk to. When they came back and did Rocky Balboa, Rocky is all alone. They realized that Rocky needed a character to bounce off of. Adrian was gone, so they made him befriend a little girl who had become an older woman in the neighborhood because he got this restaurant, and he's trying to be good to her son. And he's like, hey. You know, I just want to be there for you, like that kind yeah. of thing. It's like, come you on, gotta, man. you gotta throw it like oh, this. Give, like, give, give me, give me, give me the baton. Yo, this nigga got brain damage in 1985. Rocky Balboa got brain damage in 1985, as in he didn't know where he was at. So, so from from Rocky Four, he still <laughs> he still fought Tommy. Uh, in five, uh, the guy no. was training. Bare knuckles. Bare knuckles. Every time he got hit, he caught getting flashbacks to, to a Russian dude. Very fun. Yeah. Then he ah! got back from assimilation with a real boxer for Rocky Balboa. And, and then yeah. 
He has another movie with two more movies of Creed. You should you should be a vegetable. <laughs> Yo, that made that made that Adrian scream so much more funnier now. Yeah, because he really looking for it, Adrian. Yo, <laughs> your brain is obviously not been deteriorated, boy. That Apollo Creed should have never died because if he died, if he didn't die. Now you got Creed one and two, where he can still seek out Rocky because his dad can be this famed yeah. uh, boxer, and he wants to follow in his dad's footsteps. And his dad is like, "I don't want you in that business." And he's like, "Man, whatever. I'm gonna find your rival, and he's gonna teach me." And then you go to his, you go to Rocky, and Rocky's like, "Yo, I don't know about this." And he's like, "Yo, my dad gave you a chance. Why don't you give me one?" Yeah. And then he's like, "Ah." And he talks to Apollo, and he's like, "Hey, man, he's his own man. Do what he wants to do." End of the movie, Apollo respects the fact that Adonis has went out on his own. They become more, you know, they got their relationship tight. Part two comes up, and now part two, you can have Apollo die. You can have him die. No, 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 not shit, not shit. Not yeah, shit. I wanted him to die in three, but I was like, well, maybe do we kill him? You know what no, I mean? No, no, because here's the thing. I would have love, because the thing is, like, the, uh, to have 20 to 30 years of, like, the classic scene of him not dying but becoming like paralyzed, like him like being in a wheelchair and coming face to face with Drago, him standing, him sitting in a chair, Drago Ooh. standing there, his son right there, the other Drago right there. Like, yo, there to have that conversation after 30 years, I would have wanted to see that. Yeah. But why y'all make it seem like they thought of that in 85? Like, I think we can keep it. We can keep well, this shit well obviously, they didn't think about it in Creed 1 either because he died in 1985. And somehow there's a 25 year old kid that says running around. Which is crazy. It's like, how do how are we doing this? How did they explain that again, bro? I don't think they did. Because here's the thing did they ever say how old he was? Did they ever mention Creed's age? In Rocky like, 2, you talking about. Um, no, 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 no. In, in the Creed films. Yeah, Michael, Michael B. B. Did they ever mention his age? Yeah. yeah it, so when they did the stats. On Rocky Two, on on I mean on Creed Two, they had said he was twenty nine. <coughs> now like, there's no way he could have been twenty nine. This is in Rock. This was in Creed Two. Wait, when did Creed Two come out? Uh, I look at that right now. Yeah, Creed Two came out in twenty eighteen, and they said he was how old? Twenty nine. What's the math of that? Yeah, twenty eighteen. <sighs> he would be. He would be thirty three. He and they said he was 29? Yeah, 29. I, I pull up the stats for you. The, I, I, you know I watched my uh, Cinema Sins. They definitely pointed it out. <laughs> it was like, it was like you cannot, he, even if he was born the day of his death, I mean, conceived, it would have it made it. He it died in 85, and they're saying Michael B, realistically, because Michael B. Jordan is how old? Oh, uh, in real life? Yeah. Like 33, 34. Should be, yeah. I think he should be the same age. Here's the funny thing. In the movie, oh no, he's my age. He's 35. Yeah, 87. Yeah, that's what I thought. He, we don't. No, actually, 36. 36. Yeah. Actually Me and Michael 36. B. The exact same age. So when I look at Michael B. and I look at the character of Creed, I'm like, there's no way. I was born in '86. So when you see Creed died in 85, unless the woman that he cheated on his wife with held his sperm in a freezer, <laughs> this doesn't make sense. They should have at least made, uh, well, no, because then he would be too old if they made him the uh, actual son of Creed. But, yeah. then, but then what's crazy about it is, is that you're only three years off. So it's like, why make him 29? Like, you could have just made yeah. him in his 30s. Like, well, we'd have been, been okay mid- with that. Yeah, like mid 30s. It would have been an even better story because it's a 30 year old trying to get into fighting. Yeah. Because that was the whole aspect, too. It's just like, even in the first one, I was like, You're too old. I ain't training yeah. you. Too old. And, like, and on, especially man. quitting the job. Like, the whole new, like, just got a raise, got a new position. Him being in his 30s would have impacted me more on that because it's like, hey, bro, you giving up your career to go fight? Yo, That's how do you feel? Life. How do you feel when your when your trainers say, You're too old, Rock? He that there's a monster. He's gonna kill you. <laughs> he said, This is why I haven't let you fight him. He is a monster. <laughs> like, I got it. I got it. Go yeah. it. I got it. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. 
Again, got dude. his ass whooped. Bro, Sylvester Stallone in Rocky 2. Yeah. Not Rocky 1. And Rocky 2 was so shredded. You're like, bro, how? If yeah. these aren't steroids, I don't know what yeah, are. Yeah. yeah. Going back I respect it. Now is comical. They're like, there's no way y'all doing nothing but power punches. No jabs. No, mm -hmm. no, let me rest for a second. It was all hooks. Mass upper uppercuts. <laughs> it was like it wasn't no it wasn't no like none of this. It was none of the one two. It was none of the one two. <laughs> like yeah, that's why you tired the third round. You threw him across the ring. You should be disqualified. You should. <laughs> that that's why I don't think I enjoyed the fighting in Rocky Balboa. Because they used a real boxer, just like they used the uh one of the boxers was a real boxer in Creed Three. Yeah. But when you cast real boxers, you know, I know Tommy was a real boxer in Rocky Five as well. But I, my point is, when you cast real boxers, the way that they shot Rocky Balboa was unlike a film style. Like that's why yeah. I enjoyed Creed One, Two, and Three yeah. because they at least shot it like a movie. Mm -hmm. In comparison to Rocky Balboa, they shot that. Like it was truly a Showtime fight. Like it was live, and I'm like, yeah, it did kind of feel documentary style. Yeah, yeah, know. it felt weird. It did feel like a special. The only thing we was missing was like the commercials. Yeah, and it's like, bro, shoot this like a film. We <laughs> we got into this movie because he got a theme song. Boom, 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 boom. Creed ain't had a theme song. And then right there, the Chili's uh, commercial come in. <laughs> Neighborhood fresh. <laughs> Maybe my cribs are here for the summertime. Like. Bro, that if the character is owned by MGM, why didn't Creed, if not have his own theme song, a remix to Rockies? If not Rockies. Uh, so they didn't do that in three? Well, he didn't have it in any of the movies. Okay, because see, so the first two I understood because it was the whole like letting his girl his girlfriend well, now wife in the in the show in the uh, series do his intro. Like that, I understood. No, 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 I'm not talking about intro. I'm talking about his theme song. When you heard uh, every Rocky movie, it was oh, like all of that. Yeah, yeah they did like an upgraded, it. It did an upgraded version with Ryan Coogler. It was like dun dun dun, and his smile was rapping on top of it. Dun dun dun. Yeah, yeah but he, I'm talking about when he's like, losing. The the yeah. thing that made us buy into Rocky without y'all even realizing it, and I realize that y'all don't. As I'm saying this, the thing that made you love Rocky on top of everything else was when he was getting knocked down, he had that Popeye spinach moment, yeah. which was the theme music. And mm -hmm. that theme music inspired and motivated and got us all hyped. And we wanted to see him win. Mm -hmm. Creed never had that. That's what I'm talking about. He had several yeah. different versions of a Rocky song to be played, yes. But when he's down and out, you don't hear that music. No, they did it in one of them. It, it was very really quick, though. He yeah, was like, he knocked it, out. And yeah, he and like, he hit him. And then it knocked, yeah, I think it was two of because it went, da, 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 but it did it real short. Yeah. It didn't remember, keep going. You know, Rocky yeah. behind his neck, like, how many fingers I got up? He's like, one. Yeah, because he was bouncing back. No, I don't know if it was yeah, one or if it was two. Yeah, but it did hit the uh, da, 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 like real quickly. That's the only reason, like, when we go to the movies, uh, Man of Steel. That's I love Man of Steel. On, only, I only hated the fact that he snapped his neck. But beyond that, the reason I couldn't fully get behind it oh, in comparison to what they did in the Black Adam cameo um, for Superman was mm -hmm. they had never played the Superman theme song. I didn't want the new Man of Steel. You get when you have Superman, he has a song that he's been played since Christopher Reeves and before. Just like Batman has his theme song for when yeah. Michael Keaton. So you can't change these songs. These are the songs. These are the mm -hmm. theme moments. So when I see Man of Steel, it's like, all right, maybe they'll play it now. They never did. When you said Man of Steel, I was thinking of the boxing movie Steel. Hilarious. Yeah. Yo. And that, that movie film. made me cry, man. I was like, come on, baby. I was like, oh, you ain't talking about that. That was a good movie. Yeah. That was a very uh, uh, slept yeah. on movie. That, that movie good. and Warrior with Tom Hardy. Warrior was great. Oh, yeah. Ooh. When he was stubborn, he was too stubborn to give up. Yep. Like, oh, yeah. Man, I, was, I was done. 
Yeah. Yeah. That was good. good that, that, yeah, that's a good fight movie. That's that pretty good. That's a good fight movie. Shit. So what are some other top fight movies we got there? So that'll be our top tier for this. What other uh, fight movies. Damn. That, Rocky Rocky 3 was pretty fire. That's what uh, Clubber Lane and Hulk Hogan. Yo, Clubber Lane. That uh, when you watch the trailer to Creed Three, you think it's gonna be Lane Son or something. You're like, come on, man. <laughs> and then when you see it, you're like, oh, great, this is a completely original story. But the rock, it's kind of hard to compete with the Rocky movies when you talk about fight films. Um, Warrior is definitely a close second. I mean, you got that. You got Southpaw. Southpaw was pretty good. Southpaw was amazing. The Hurricane, but I don't really like the Undisputed, of course. I don't really like the movies where um, where a black man is convicted of something that he didn't do. You know what I mean? And then he got no, 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 no. He did that shit. Like that's the thing I liked about Undisputed. No, he did that shit. And that's I'm talking about Hurricane. <laughs> Oh, yeah, not her. Hey, no, undisputed, dog. I did that shit. He killed that person. He, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were here for a reason. Uh, what else is that? But it's not even just like sports wise, like stuff that's based on it. So, like, even Mortal Kombat is considered like a fight movie. Oh, Mortal Kombat 1, because we don't acknowledge part two. Mortal Kombat 1 was so good. Another movie with the, the iconic theme song. That's the one. Yeah. That's the, you know what I mean? Every, if you want the cheat code to a movie, bro, people give you uh grace points as long as you got the theme song. If you make a movie that is a six out of ten and you add the classic theme song or a dope ass theme song with it and keep playing it throughout the movie, it'll change the six to a yeah. seven and a half to an eight. And an and nah, eight is all right. you need to get a sequel. No, nah, he's right. That definitely did that for Do- uh, Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness. I was like, this is a, a hot six. And then Professor X came out. And Come on. I'm like, well, this is seven now. We're at a seven now. And they never even played that theme song for the original X Men, nope. That's wild. That's what I'm saying. You can't make these movies and not give the theme song, bro. Fans, mm-hmm. okay, real comic book fans are going because they want to see something accurate. And fans of the franchise, of maybe like they watched a cartoon or you know they got the stories from their cousin from the comics, they're going to get that nostalgia. Yeah. Whatever they going for, they want what they're going for. And if you don't give it to them, you just lost a possible fan. Speaking of which, um, because you know, y'all need to be listening to this Marvel uh Spider-Man 4. I need to have the amazing Spider-Man TV show intro music in there somehow. Somehow, when that when that guitar hit that I need that in there. I yeah. need that somewhere in there playing. Yeah. Remix to whatever. I need that in there. That's do a fact. Have, do we know the plot yet of Spider-Man 4? Nah. It gotta no. have something to do with Venom because they show Venom. Uh, yeah. This gotta be his Venom one, bro. Or Craven. Craven the Hunter. Ah, Craven's getting his own spinoff. So it's like, I mean, his own origin movie. So they wouldn't have him fight him yet unless they add him to the Venom story. I'm nervous uh, for Sony, man. I'm nervous, man. They gonna have to figure out a way to do another deal with Marvel, man, because they have failed solo with Sony. No, nah, but it's still a Marvel one. That's what they were saying because Tom Holland is still in it. So this also oh, it's gonna be Marvel Sony. Yeah, yeah it's still Marvel okay. Sony. Yeah, it's, okay. a, yeah, it's the fourth uh, addition to that deal. Oh, I don't think only- Tom would do a solo Sony movie with Spider Man. <laughs> I mean, that's just me guessing. I mean, like Sony is killing it right now with Into the Spider Verse. If Into the Spider Verse would have bombed, Marvel would have been able to buy Spider Man back. Dang. Well, you got you got yeah, but you got to now make these other ones not bomb. So like. Uh, what it is, Madam Spider got a hit. Um, Craven the Hunter got a hit, and it's those not. two, yeah, and it's like those two. I'm like, good luck with that. Venom three got a hit. It's like you lucky with Venom because you don't need that much of a story. No, the only Venom. one that saved them was Morbius, and then when they kind of do the spinoff, when they have the uh, that's what they need. They focus <laughs> Morbius two. It's Morbius time. 
That's what that's what's gonna save the franchise, all right? <laughs> Morbius too, and then what it need to be, we need Mo Tyrese. <laughs> we need Mo Tyrese, okay? <laughs> now I see you shaking your head, CT, but this is what I'm gonna bring you around. Stay with me, ready for Morbius. We're gonna throw Jason Statham in there. Why you? Jason Statham gonna come save the day. And let me tell you something. <laughs> if <laughs> if Jason Statham was craven, I would be all in. Why did that not? Happen. Because they don't think they keep trying no. to. Executives are looking at things like, well, you know, we gotta get somebody. They wouldn't even bring Wesley Snipes back for uh for Blade, and they were like, yeah, he's too old. But you hired Mahershala Ali, who was not that much younger than him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what blew my mind. You're gonna start the franchise with a man who's in the same age group as Wesley Snipes, but you won't bring back. Wesley, and Wesley can fight. <laughs> hey, Wesley, Wesley can fight. He, Wesley's life was a senior. And he was a freshman in high school. Yo, I'm about to look at that right now. Mahershala. You know Mahershala. the nigga that uh, that did that terrible movie with Mike Tyson. He he would have been a better uh, uh, blade. blade. He looks like him. Mahershala is 49. All right, Wesley Snipes. It's like 60. Damn. All right, Wesley is 60. However. That, I mean, that's that, but again, too, like how long we've been waiting on Blade? We've been waiting on that Blade, Blade for a minute. Yeah. He would have been that same age. He's supposed to be a vampire him. who don't age. They need, to, they need to get a nigga that's 20, 23? Yeah, do that. The dude who played, you hit it on the head, Dion. The guy who just played Mike Tyson on the Hulu series, yeah. who's also in this new Hulu series playing somebody. <laughs> he's Hulued up. He got a contract. Yeah. He got a six picture deal. He would be a great Blade. Also, Yelan from Insecure. Would be an incredible blade, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because he had that. Uh, he, man, he got so yoked and he was ready in the mm-hmm. Purge movie, the first Purge. Yeah, he's there's a plethora of young black actors that could have yeah. played Blade. Uh, speaking of which, uh, of young of young black actors, uh, I, I just want to throw this out there so it's on camera. Um, I don't know if we talked about this, but I feel like uh, we may have. What's that dude from Bridgington? The the, the black guy. What is it? Rich. 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 Reggie yeah, Jean Lyskin Page. Dude. I know that's not it. I know it's not Reggie. Light skin dude, right? Yeah. yeah. He should be Dr. Doom. Okay. He should be Dr. Doom. He talking. You, Why do you think if so? you if you're going for a young type of person, because of his style, one, he is he is in the realm of a handsome man. And because of like what Dr. Doom's story is, I could see him going crazy from being able to lose all of that appeal that he has, all of that vanity that he has, and really portray that character. And then the fact that um, Jonathan Majors is Kane that lines in with us being able to understand where the melanated side of him comes from, seeing as how he is Dr. Doom's, you know, the descendant or ascendant? It's descendant, if descendant. that's what you're going for. But if yeah. that's the descendant of him, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah both him and Reed Richards. So that was oh. like, this, is, this is weird. Yeah, yeah. So you don't know which one, which Kane belongs to him and which one is to like uh, Nathaniel. But the ones to wear Iron Man is the one supposed to be more than the thing Richard said. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's where it gets complex because that makes sense if you get John, the John dude. Um, but right now, I don't know, man. I just don't want – I want majors to stay special. In wrestling, Brock Lesnar came back, and I want to say 2013 – Something like that. Yeah. And they kept Brock Lesnar as a special event, right? Yeah. Every time you saw him, it was an event. You knew tickets were about to go off the shelves. I want that for Jonathan Majors. I don't want them to oversaturate his Kang. Yeah. And that that's why I like him being picked because, one, it doesn't it, – it's not stopping the star shine of Jonathan Majors, and we get to see him – built himself on another side of the phase five and six spectrum. So being able to see him face Fantastic Four in his realm and then to see him get himself built up almost too is where it's like, okay, how we have to do like a Brock Lesnar, for example, who are we going to build up to be in this rivalry with him? And so like I even see him as the Seth Rollins building him up to where it's like, oh, okay, dang, we see it now these two superpowers come together and however they're about to start secretly. Well, apparently, Spider Man's Tom Holland is going to be the uh, the lead in Avengers: Kang Dynasty. Oh, 
I see that if you're doing Young Avengers. If you're doing the Young <laughs> Avengers, I see that. I, I'm. I'm upset. I, I think we need to stay away from Kang for a while because Phase Four has a lot yeah. of local villains that we haven't dealt with. They just kind of went away, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like, yo, y'all, y'all can't just leave us hanging with all these postponed. What happened to so and so? We what happened we, to we still got to deal with the scrolls. Like the scrolls right. is a big part of Marvel. Like they right. just kind yeah. of made that seem like it wasn't nothing in this universe. What I do right. hate about TV shows when they have local villains, and all of a sudden they have like a uh, uh, a collaboration for a bunch of TV shows and they postpone their villains they mm-hmm. do a little bit now and they deal with this and they come back to it the, the, the opposite episode that's why I don't want from phase four I want y'all to deal with this shit right now postpone Kane far mm-hmm. away and, and then deal with your the hand is coming out the water I was just going to say it I was like yo can y'all please Please tell us something about this. There ain't no way no one's talking about there's a celestial head and arm sticking out in the fucking water. Every single phase four has a a, a, a book, like not a book, it's like something is like something happened. What's gonna happen next? Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I said it best too, like. I think what we didn't really like attach to Ant-Man, as we talked about in the previous episode, was that. It was a good movie, but the wrong villain. Yeah. Modoc yeah. should have been the main villain. Yeah. It, it was set there. It was perfect. Y'all had already written us for us. Yo, went to the quantum realm. Everybody think he's dead. Yo, he didn't build this entire thing because he's a supercomputer. Finds that signal, brings them down, and now he wants to wreak revenge. Even had a little Cassie moment where it's like, don't be a dick. It's like, yo, that could have been that. Kang is so special that it's like, yo, you want to see kind of like how you did Thanos. I want to see him pulling the strings. I want to see the smallest parts where he's putting the pieces together. I like seeing that. Like, you could have really showed Ant-Man all the way through and then gave us that Easter egg of Victor Time. Exactly. So we knew what we were getting into. Because now you're letting me know he's the villain in Loki season two, and then we get Kang Dynasty. It's like, don't oversaturate this. He's super special. Yeah. 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 Kang, that Kang, the Conqueror, got beat by Ant Man. Yeah. That that bothers me. I wish he just went away. I wish he got out. I still think he did. I still still think he did, and I think that's who's going to become Kang Prime. I think that's what I think that's what happened. I don't think he's dead. I wish I wish Ant Man and the Wasp got stuck in the quantum realm. I, I you know what I'm saying like Lee was like, oh shit, what's gonna happen now? I don't. Well, they're, to... they're stuck somewhere, and you know yeah. what I? So here's my hear me out. Okay. Here's my hear me out. I think Ant Man did not make it back. I don't think any of them made it back. I think the Beyonder has them in a simulation awaiting secret. Because if you notice at the end how everything changed, it kept going in a loop. Hmm. Everything he saw was a loop. The same people he was talking to at one point were behind him now. And then he got, I saw them again having a conversation. And so, you know, like even like watching some of the videos, how they say, you know, that could be like editing cuts. It was like, yo, you notice that? You also notice a lot of shit is now green and purple. Yeah. The cake, why was the cake green? They're very rare. Wouldn't Ant Man have a red cake with an ant on it? Why was it green? Hmm. There's a there's a lot of pieces in there to make me think somebody is pulling strings to get them ready for Secret Wars. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Right. Never thought about that. I don't yeah. know who Beyonder is. I gotta look him up. Oh, that's Beyonder. That, yeah, that's the other version of who started uh, Secret Wars. Uh, there's another there's another version too, and I, I, I think I'm saying the right person, Beyonder. And then there's another version of Secret Wars that uh, is centered around like Doctor Doom and Kane. Mm. There it is. So, yeah, it is. This is yeah. good. This was, this, was, this was good. So, um, we, we have, glass up. I had a fat eye. Oh shit! Where were you at, bro? <laughs> oh, I thought you really did. Bro. The way you was kind of like, wait, wait, wait. Uh, but yeah, man, we talked about the turtles. We, we really jumped into Creed three. Really just had a good conversation. So, uh. Just to catch up on some of the quick points, like we won't, we won't dive too much into them, but something that we were going to discuss. Um, I always say his name wrong, but I call him John Benadryl, and that's not his name at all. 
Um, but the guy that plays Punisher is oh, John Berenthal. Oh, listen to me right now, bro. Let's go. John Berenthal. I'm going to give you a little quick story time. The movie Fury came out mm-hmm. with Brad. Uh, was it Brad Pitt? Mm-hmm. Brad I think Pitt. it was the Brad tank. Pitt. Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf, John Berenthal, and uh, my man from Percy Jackson. And, bro, Tangerine took me to the screening of it. T-A-N-J. For those of you guys that are watching, everybody be trying to spell it like the fruit. I know. I know. But it's mm-hmm. T-A-N-J. So, Tangerine takes me to the screening of it, and we get a chance to see, you know, the actors. It's a QA. and a At the end of it, I watched John Berenthal look up at the whole audience. Everybody was going to Shia. Everybody was going to uh, Brad Pitt. And he was just standing off to the side, just like looking at everybody. And I walked up to him because it was no line to get to him. He was, you know, nobody really knew him at this point. He was fresh yeah. off walking dead, but people weren't going up. And I say, hey, man, how does it feel? He's like, man, it's feels good man and i was like dude i wish you nothing but the best man he's like thank you so much man i was like yeah and then uh shook hands and then i i went off and i remember that that humble spirit that that brother had and i see it in everything he does now and i say that to say when he became the punisher nobody was happier than i was because he embodied for the first time on camera the fully rounded Punisher. Yeah. Punisher uh, 2 War Games was a great Punisher for that time. Yeah. But he didn't look the part and he was, you know, it was just like, come on, man. This John made you believe that the Punisher was a biofilm instead that, of a comic book movie. That man made me believe that before I even seen him in the first 10 minutes. Like, Bro, when he shot up that Italian joint and then Daredevil finally found him, I was like, yo, this is Punisher. And then when he had him on the ground, bang, bang, I'm like, oh, oh, he really just shot him. And it just went off. I was like, yo, that's Daredevil. That's that's Daredevil. His scream every time John Perthall screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now I got to know though too when you met him. Yeah, is it that type of tone when he talks, or is it kind of you know like you know like the regular things when he said, "Nah, man, I'm just really glad to be here." Or was it one of those? Yeah, I'm really glad to be here. Does he you talk like Punisher, or is it like a different type of voice? He put it like this: You've seen his interviews. Yeah, he speaks with a miller lower register than the interviews because interviews are up here. And it's yeah. like uh, it's like it's like this, but it's not Punisher. Okay, okay, yeah, because that's that's what I was wondering when you said it. Like I just picture him at the panel, like yeah, yeah, it's just all taking it in. Just, like I don't <laughs> but know. Pete, <laughs> when I saw this, is what made me become an even bigger fan of his beyond the moment of meeting him. When I saw him post a picture of his childhood friends that he still has to this day, and all of them were not only black. Hey. But they were, mm-hmm. hey. you understand? When I saw that, I said, "Ah, that's why he's so fucking cool." He's a good actor, man. Good Don't actor. forget, he played in uh, King Richard as this guy. Yep, <laughs> hilarious. Hey, he had that same mustache. Just put his hair up and then went shot Wolf of Wall Street. Ah, <laughs> he didn't change the like, look. I forgot this is the Punisher. He had like a little voice right here. Baby. He was talking like that. No, he's a great actor, man. That, like you said, though, that's one of those ones. Whenever you see him in something, it's like, "Yo, good for you, bro." Like, yeah, you, you feel that energy. Like, I'm glad you're in this film. Yeah, you can tell you put your all into it. Like seeing him, yo, that prison fight scene, bro. I was like, yo, only he could make it feel like that. Like you felt the intensity of this man down the hallway with nothing but prisoners. It's like, yo, that's. That's very hard for you to bring that out of just a shot of you shooting. I'm like, props to him. Yeah, just props to him. Bro, we about to get the Punisher and Daredevil. When does this come out? Next year or this year? Next year. Damn. Next year. I'm so ready they for this damn start, show. They just started filming. Uh, Hold on. So I, I don't know if we were joking about this, but Iron Fist is not on Disney Plus, right? No, it's on there. Uh, <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Please. <laughs> 
Netflix shows went over there. Okay. Yeah, we'll like, yeah, yeah. we, 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 we buy all of them except, except that one. <laughs> except yeah, y'all, yeah. y'all keep that. That's all that. Now, I don't, now, I don't never see it in the suggestion tab. Now, I will say that. You know, if you go to the Marvel tab at Disney Plus, it ain't double up, though. Like, they'll even show, like, hey, watch the fenders. You got dust on it? Oh, yeah. wow. Look at the clearance man. Look at this. Bro. You, go, you go click on the little picture and it's like, I'm sorry, did you mean Willow? <laughs> did you mean Willow? <laughs> that show, here's what messed me up about Iron Fist, bro. <laughs> At the end of season one, if you sat through season one and you watched it and they went towards, uh, I forget the name of it, but the place that we all wanted to see the entire season. Yeah. Then they start season two, episode one, talking about, yeah, that was a crazy place, huh? And it's like, oh, bro. Yeah, that's that did have me hot. Like, I, that pissed like, me off. So we didn't get to see this promised land? Right. And then one and two should have just been season one. Like, season one could have been caught up in five episodes, and then the other five could have been season two, where we'd at least seen where he got both the fists. Yeah, and it's like okay, season two. I'm ready. I'm ready for whatever is going to come. We didn't got past you. We didn't got through your past. Bring on heroes for hire. Like I'm ready to see heroes for hire. Never. They did not give us that. And then you know, because I wasn't a. I watched. I played as Iron Fist in the video games, and I saw a little bit of him in cartoons. But I wasn't really familiar with him. But I knew what he was supposed to look like. And the whole season one, I was like, how come he don't look like what I? No, he's supposed to look like. And then I started seeing everybody talk about how bad it was. And I was like, ah, this makes sense. I wasn't wrong. Yeah, yeah. Nah, that boy never put that mask on. I was like, yo, you the, that's the closest thing white people got to do rags. And y'all ain't going to let them see it? Now, Luke Cage season one, fire. Luke Cage season two was not bad. The ending of Luke Cage season two was trash. Because it's like, how dare you at the end of two seasons make him the bad guy? Yeah, I didn't. I, there was there was a lot of things in that I didn't like. Like I didn't like that one Cottonmouth got killed first half of the season. That y'all made him seem like he's the big bad, and then Mariah Dillard still did not seem like the big bad. No. Then you threw another big bad in there. It's like, oh yeah, he got a brother that's behind all of this, and he's been planning this. I'm like, when I thought he thought he was dead. Why would he know all this? Like, what? Why, what? This don't make no sense. Yeah, and then two, good. and then two was like Bushmaster's pace was great, but they should have made it strictly about Bushmaster and Luke Cage being stuck in the middle of this war between him and Mariah Dillon. Mm -hmm. That was that was such a good story because of the fact that everything they had been through with each other's families, they should have brought the entire city of Harlem to war. And Luke Cage is in the middle trying to handle it. And it's out of fucking control. Like, they gave us little glimpses of it, yeah. but it wasn't enough. Like, it should have been pure chaos between these two people. I agree. They didn't give us that. They didn't give us that. And then, like you said, at the end, it's like, oh, both of these people are going to die. And now Luke Cage is the bad guy in a low mustard color suit. That was so stupid. It was like... Did I miss an episode in between the last episode's moments? Yeah, like, did he get bribed and we, we didn't see that or something like that? Like, what happened? Then but Jessica then they, Jones, season one, <laughs> incredible. Incredible. Season two, what are we doing? Man, that mom, that mom, bro. Come on. Man. I only watched the first season of all of them just to get just to get to the Defenders. And then you guys are Defenders and we're let down. Yeah, that was like, I'm done with all these. Yo, yeah. def Defenders didn't make no sense. And you know what it was, too? It was because Daredevil did the same thing as Luke Cage, did the same thing as uh, even like uh, Iron Fist, where they gave multiple characters. Well, really, they got that from him. Where they gave multiple stories, where they did Daredevil and Electra. Yeah. It didn't mess him up because both stories were fired mm -hmm. and either one could have been the main plot the problem was you made that bleed over to defenders and didn't give us anything mm -hmm. and so now it's like and she died at that so it was just like yo defenders should have been her dying there and then mm -hmm. seeing what happens to her and it shouldn't have been about the hand it should have been about straight electric <clears throat> and what she's done 
But it was just like, yeah. Question is, if if these characters are going to cross over to the MCU, like the Daredevils and you know that the whole little universe, or Mahershala Ali was definitely in uh, Daredevil. <laughs> Luke Cage, right? Yeah, he was yeah. Godmouth. Yeah, and uh, uh, the the mom of the same show was in Iron Man well, Civil, Civil War, War, right? Different character, but yeah, yeah I, I know. Uh, I was like, I was also, like, also, also, let's not forget, Mariah Dillard was also in Avengers. I remember, she was downstairs and gave him the picture. In no, Avengers. no, that's that's Civil War. No, I thought that was Age Ultron. No, that's Civil War. Oh shit! Okay. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's right what after she he finished the speech, she pushed the yeah. elevator. Yeah. 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 I was like, yeah. I was like, are, are these are do they recognize the people? I know, I know, I know they do that. They just, they, they just kind of blow past. Like, hey, I I never met you before. Yeah, I mean, same, I mean, same thing with Eternals. Like, uh, the chick that is the star of it, she was in Captain Marvel. She's one of the aliens. She's one of the main uh forces. The uh the hilarious. Bullshit. Yeah, that's the same person. Yeah, casting is always very funny because <laughs> it's, it's too many actors, man. Do why too many what? actors for you to be doubling up? But then it's like you know. How do you take that? Like as a young actor or as an actor that hasn't gotten a big look, you get offered a role of pizza guy number three in a Marvel movie. You like, yes. And then you do that. Then you go raise your stake. And now they're like, hey, would you like to play a superhero? You're like, yes. Yes, I would. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then also too the same thing of like being good. So like for instance, in, in both ways. So like let's say we even give it to like CT. Like CT does a great job in Luke Cage uh season three as like <laughs> the the dude that bought the uh shop and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And so it's like yo like you really did well like you really ran over with our audience and they and they latched on to you and it's like yo it kind of sucks because we want to bring you back because you're so good but it's like that role kind of is limited. Mm-hmm. So it's like yo like let's try to put you in something else. And so it's just like, I see why people would do that. Like, even for someone like yourself, like, if I saw that, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. No, I like seeing CT in this new role because I get to see him more. And I did kind of get a, get attached to him as an actor because mm-hmm. he stood out. And then you also had the other side of it, kind of like a, um, like the guy that played Moon Knight, where mm-hmm. you have to redeem yourself. It's just like, well, yo, I didn't choose to make Apocalypse like this. Yeah. And so I know y'all not finna use that same apocalypse no more. <laughs> so it's like, can I get a redo and get yeah. cast this movie? Man. But that was Fox before it became Disney, so he got a pass. That yeah, is he is, and he's the villain on the new Spider Man. Yep, he's Spider Man twenty nine. The voice, the voice of. Oh, animated. Got you. <laughs> yeah, Oscar Isaac been working ever since X Machina. Yeah. Like he's yeah. been working before that, but like X Machina, he came in there, he was bald head with the beard, he was kind of yoked, and he played the role so perfectly. The calls just continued to come in and they haven't stopped. Ja- uh, James McAvoy, incredible young Professor Xavier. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they're going to do with these X Men, but it needs to happen immediately. Yeah. Man, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll make black, that. Black, we'll we'll make, make that. We'll make uh, that. Huh? Yeah, we want black Professor Xavier and uh, Magneto? I don't want that. I don't want that either. I don't because I don't I don't want you to try to latch that on to what we know it is like civil rights and then you have a white person trying to depict that for us. I don't want you tying that into our mutants. Like we get the the mutant tone of what it is and stuff like that. I don't need you to try to make it so like, hey, let's make this person black, let's make Magneto black. It's like, no, um, Magneto gotta be white. Like you like you know exactly why it gotta be white. If you and so, like, you can't just change that. So it's just like, I'm cool with that. Now, the other X-Men and stuff like that, yo, yeah, we can diversify this. I'm like, I wouldn't mind a, a, a Asian Kitty Pride. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind you changing some of that stuff up. I wouldn't mind, you know, Cyclops being Latino. Just make sure he's arrogant. Make sure he's an <laughs> a-hole. I wouldn't mind that at all. Uh, but just them two, like, no, like, some people you don't need to change, and I'm gonna say for them to like keep them cast for like you know someone on the Caucasian side. Let me ask y'all this: this is, this is a serious question, and I'm gonna end with this. All right, 
Do y'all feel bad for X-Men, people with power, and the world is scrutinizing them for having powers, calling them muties, and like, you're different, you're a freak. Do you feel bad for the X-Men, or you be like, yeah, I kind of get it? Well, let me ask you this. I've never okay. heard a nigga be called mutie, nigga. I've only I've heard been- it. <laughs> Like, you muty! You've Get let that here. slide six times this episode, and I done gave you a pass all six it, until now. The buck stops want, here. I, I want to see your link. I don't. I'm not gonna watch it. Series. I don't <laughs> want to hear it. They're, they're mutants now. Muties. I. I definitely don't. Um, I get both sides because people fear what they don't understand, right? So, I get the aspect of this normal dude who is walking down the street and you see a guy coming down with frog eyes <laughs> and he has, you know, like a super long limb and you like, what the fuck? And then you run the other way. I get that. I also get being the frog guy and people staring at you in fear. So I think that's always been the interesting dichotomy of X-Men is you being able to see both sides, but you always side with the beast because you see more of their perspective because if they've given you nothing to fear why are you so afraid of me and if i'm telling you about being androids y'all are the only people that hate that we have androids all right y'all always say no 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 that is not no 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 no. no, no. you You are different you freak you're making my life like hell that's how i feel because here's the circle, <laughs> and here's two things to a plot hole in that circle. One, you're comparing you're comparing an AI which is missing something from what we're talking about with mutants, which is a soul. And so, if anything is shown from an AI, you're making something that does not like you. It is taught to make things perfect in what mm. they're supposed to be doing. You understand humans are the most imperfect beings on this planet. Mm -hmm. This is why they choose to keep killing us every time they start making this stuff because, yo, y'all messing up our way of life and your own way of life. Mm -hmm. So we got to take you out. Yeah. Thank you, iPhone. (laughs) So, but even for the mutant thing, I I like how CT say, I understand both sides. Where you start to side with it is because I don't, I would like if we had like we had mutants around now. I'm not judging you, but I definitely don't feel like because you got frog guys and walking around that someone should come physically harm you or mentally harm you or verbally harm you Those are good because ones. of how you do. Those are the good ones because you don't know one of these niggas can snap. Like, you know how strong I am? Do you know what I can do? Yeah, but it's also that responsibility, like even for us, like to someone like Michael B. Jordan, like I'm the juggernaut compared to his size. Yeah, and I could do anything to him, but it's my choice to to you know fit myself into society and follow the norms that y'all give. Because like if you really think about it, Dion, like if you were in a room right now with the people you're normally in, if you wanted to get to somebody and fuck them up, do you really think anyone could stop you? Yeah, that's the thing. Looking at both of y'all and people who are watching this, you don't know this. But when you look at the three of us, I'm the smallest of all three of us. Dion is the tallest. He has the size. Will Farrell is a building. Like, if you stand next to Will Farrell, he can demolish you with the snap of his fingers. And they are both gentle giants, right? I'm not so much of a gentle giant as I am. I will make my presence imposing upon you if I don't like the area that I'm in. But that's just like you said, it's a choice. We're choosing to, uh, you know, great power comes great responsibility. I'm not about to be a bully or pick on anybody just because I'm bigger than them. But you have certain mutants, and that's why it's always been interesting. You got the good mutants. And then you got the mutants that are like, yo, I'm tired of being pushed around. I'm about to push back. And those are the Magneto uh, acolytes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there it is. There it is. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, like, let us let us know what you think. This was a very great riveting conversation today, man. We talked about the Ninja Turtles. We talked about Creed, man. We talked about the Kang Dynasty again. We talked yeah. about Dr. Doom. Man, we've discussed a lot. We want 
to hear from you and what you think. So make sure you put in the comments below. And I want to thank y'all for checking out the episode. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, cut on your notifications so y'all know when this is coming on. And of course, before we get out of here, I always want to make sure that y'all know where to support Dion Lack and CT. So I'm going to let them go ahead and have the floor. Dion, you are first. Follow me on all platforms at D-I-O-N-L-A-C-K. Dion Lack, that's it nice get to your boy just go to the patreon man it's all there so what y'all want to do y'all want to go on sunday to see the jason state the movie i don't even know what the movie is called um saturday would be better I'm, uh, can't do saturday i got a show out in uh, the <laughs> ie but we can do friday during the day i'm down for friday i'm down for friday dion lack operation portion uh friday night uh well, my daughter has something she has you something know. friday night y- yes i said friday during the day yeah she ain't got shit during the day motherfucker. yeah i was like what <laughs> they <laughs> already had that excuse ready yeah, boy, yeah. I was like, Wait, what? <laughs> well actually her event starts at uh at six great nigga. we said during the day and he ain't gave no time he didn't I don't nigga, I can't what time does that start, Dion? I'm, 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 pictures. A, I'm a volunteer at the science center. Oh, really? You gonna volunteer? What time are you gonna volunteer? I don't I don't know the time, yo. I, whatever time school hours is. Oh, what oh school hours are usually from eight until two thirty at the latest. Okay, so well, you gonna be there during that time, right? Depends on what I don't know what time I'm leaving. I got you though, man. No, nah, well, I, mean, no, 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 no. I see what CT talking about. Now. Exactly. No, 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 no. This is Dion like, every day. Yeah, because oh. you get to because technically school done at two, and it's a Friday, so I know they're closing early on you. No. So two from two to five, you're available. Yeah. To the point where we can even come to a theater closer to you, so you can get on faster. <laughs> yeah. What you yeah. think about that? Yeah. Lack for sure. For sure. That's a son of a bitch. Yeah, right. When people say sure, that is the most sarcastic way of like. You know what? Really. Here's the thing, bro. I don't know if y'all know this. I don't like leaving my fucking house. I don't threaten me with a good time. I don't have we don't have to take you to do shit for your birthday. As a matter of fact, we not. You just talk yourself I'm, I'm out of more it. More so like why are we doing this on camera? I'm like, why are we doing this now? Because the people are now? invested. We started this shit on camera. We <laughs> got to end it on camera. <laughs> Damn it. it started like this. So you know what? <laughs> we rescind our offer. We I called you. He sent you a text. You all good, Playboy. Don't make us feel bad about trying to do something for your I, ass. I, I, I'm gonna send both of y'all the screenshots of me. Gotta gotta go to uh, thank my daughter, and I got a uh, 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 what? A photo shoot, huh? The photo shoot didn't even get mentioned to it just now. That's crazy. Right. Keep like, popping up. When I said I got some Friday night, I was like, okay, that was a photo shoot Friday night, and my thing is for my daughter in the morning. Yeah, so morning and time. night. Hey, enjoy yeah. your Friday. Right? <laughs> enjoy your Friday, brother. Because we, we going to be doing stuff that we want to do. So enjoy your right. Friday, man. <laughs> so you let me know, CT. I'm down to go see you. Yeah. Like now that our whole Friday, Friday is open, we can go Friday night, Will. Right. <laughs> this nigga, Dion. All right, fellas, I'm out of here, man. This nigga, Dion, is right. stifling my mood. Look Goodbye.